want to soften this up because it's got way too sharp of corners here. So I can go back to the curve, I can exit out of shape mode, go back to this curve over here, and just fill it the corners. It's really easy to do in 3ds Max. Uh, so I can see this better, I'm going to go back over to my perspective view, hit F4 once again so we can see it happen. Go into the top view once again, editable spline, open that up, and I want to select by vertex. And I'll just select these two vertices here and apply a fillet. So there's the fillet button. You'll find it over here in the geometry rollout. Okay, so scrolling back down, we're looking for fillet. And it is interactive. You can click and then click and drag in the view to set your fillet amount interactively. Now that's pretty cool. Check that out. That's amazing. Well, actually, I'll hit Control Z so that I can show you that you can also set a fillet amount numerically over here. Okay, Control Z to undo. I could actually, as well, I could just type in a value like 0.5 or something. Now I'm not able to adjust that after the fact, so I probably want to go back to the interactive method, but to each their own. I'm going to hit Control Z and we'll do it through the interactive method, just eyeballing it. And I think that's somewhere in the ballpark there. I can click the button again to turn it off. I can turn off vertex mode in my editable spline. Go back out here and select my loft and kind of orbit around it and check it out. We're doing pretty well here. We can do better. Um, there might be some twisties in here. So I might want to go back into my shape. And remembering this is not undoable, so I might want to hit Control S first to try rotating this shape, and especially in the top view, and see if we can figure out if the twisting is objectionable. And, you know, we can also move as well and try to get that so that it's more or less got a regular pattern to it. It's not ever going to be perfect, but we can get it pretty close. And it is a cushion after all, it's not a machine part, so we want there to be a little bit of slop anyway. Okay, so I'll exit out of shape mode. And we can also play around with the loft skin parameters. So I'll open that rollout up, and you've got stuff here like the number of steps. This is similar to the interpolation settings for a spline, except that um, for a loft object, these settings are going to override whatever interpolation settings you've got in the source splines. Move this forward a little bit. The Z axis, get that kind of lined up. And the other thing we can do is actually it's got a top and bottom to it. It's got a cap at the bottom and top, and we don't really need that. Okay, so if I just move this up for a second and show you, it's got a bottom. So we can get rid of that. We can just, just click this option here to turn off the cap at the start. So now we've got just a shell here. It's hollow and single-sided. It doesn't have a bottom to it. Move that back down in place. And we're pretty close except for, you know, the shape of this is not really very good as you can see. It's kind of got this funny profile to it. It's sort of an S-curve deal. Back in my loft parameters I can flip a switch that says linear interpolation and then instead of getting that S-curve now I'm getting a straight line between those two profile curves. Cool. Okay, what else can we do? Well, we actually don't really want a straight line. We want to have some sort of custom curve to that shape. So to do that, we're going to use a loft deformation. Okay, so what's a loft deformation? Well, it's kind of like a modifier built right into the loft object. I don't need to apply a modifier to get this effect. It's already built in. So back in my loft parameters, I'll scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see a rollout that says deformations. So you want to open that up. Okay, here we go. Let's close some of these others to make this a little bit clearer. Deformations. We've got a scale deformation and that's all I really need at this point. And what that's going to do is it's going to vary the scale of the profile curves as they travel down the path. So we can basically make this bubble outward a little bit as seen from the side. 
So I'll click the Scale button to activate it. Then I get a dialog here that says Scale Deformation. And I can zoom in here a little bit. And what we're seeing here is a graph indicating the size or scale of each one of these profile curves traveling down the path. Right now it's all set to 100%. So left to right we're seeing distance along the path and up and down is the size of the profile curve. So it's pretty intuitive if you just grab this move tool, select one of these and move it around, you'll kind of see what's going on. So this is the beginning of the path and this is the end of the path. So at 0% along the path I want a size of 0 and that's what these statistics are. Or I can say at 0% along the path I want to have a size of 100. Okay, or this one for example I can go select that and move that as well and you'll see now here at 100% along the path I've got a size of 30%. Alright, so what we really want to do here is we want to create a custom curve to get a nice pleasing result and to do that we're going to create more points. So up here in scale deformation you'll see insert corner point. Well you can hold that down and you'll get another option here which is insert bezier point which is going to give you adjustable tangent handles. So I want to do that. So I'll click here to create a new bezier point. You'll see here suddenly now my level of detail has increased but that's okay. We can always adjust that later in the skin parameters once again. So I, what I want is I want to go back to my move control point tool and make that a little bit thicker there. And already we can see there's a difference. We can go over to our left view and uh, press the Z key so we can get a better sense of this. Zoom in and out a little bit. And as I adjust this curve we'll get different results here. So I might want to zoom into that once again. And I could play around with this. And I'll need to adjust this for a while until I get it just the way I want it. And I may actually need to go back and edit my original source curves as well. But this is looking pretty good. I can right click on here and move this forward and back, check it in all the views and make sure it's more or less conforming to the shape. And uh, if I do have any issues, you know, like I said, I can go back to my profile curve and, and adjust it because I don't want it to actually crash into the surrounding geometry. I can move it down a little bit. And I can play around with this curve a little bit more because uh, it's going to take some fine tuning. I can go in here and right click and convert one of these points, in this case to a Bezier corner point. That'll allow me to then adjust the shape to make it a little bit more natural. Maybe I could try it all the way up here or somewhere in between. And like I said, it might take a while to adjust this to get it just the way you want it. So it's a bit of a subtle tool, but it's a very helpful tool. And we can get good results this way. And this is a pretty simple, sort of easy way of achieving this result, rather than going through more advanced and complicated methods like subdivision surfaces. A loft is pretty much a, a simple technology. Okay, so it does look like I do want to adjust the shape of my profile curve a little bit because it's not exactly conforming to uh, what I want. So I'll go back to that profile curve once again. And because it's instanced, and that happens automatically, I can just go in here and select segments or vertex and move them around and you know, fine tune this shape. And, and I'm looking in the perspective view to see is it doing what I want. You know, maybe I want the whole thing to be larger. So let's go to the spline mode and maybe I'll scale the whole thing just in one axis make that wider there. And once again, uh, orbiting around in my perspective view and investigating what I've done. 